Hey, I'm standing here with Maria from the same movement, the Netherlands. Hello. Yes, hello. <laughs> So, how, uh, how are you finding the conference so far? I'm loving it. It's the first time I attend this conference and uh, it's very interesting. It's so many different perspectives and I get inspired by a lot of speakers. So, it's great to be here. I'll definitely be back next year. Hmm. And I've been hearing uh, from you and your colleagues uh, about SAVE in yes. Holland. Can you tell us about how, it's, how is it going? Yes, so um, the SAVE movement only started a little over a year ago in the Netherlands. The first group was uh, Boxel Big SAVE, which I started. Um, and it's at one of the biggest slaughterhouses in Europe. It's the, the biggest big slaughterhouse in, uh, in, in the Netherlands. Um, and in the beginning of this year, other groups started popping up. And especially in the last couple of weeks and months, we've had a lot of initiative coming from people who have attended uh, vigils and other, um, other vegan activist uh, movements wanting to set up their own group. So uh, right now I'm uh, the main coordinator of all the groups. Um, but you know we have lots of different organizers within the movement at the moment we've got 12 active groups but there are already a, a few lined up that we're going to start up uh, during the course um, during the rest of this year so I think by the end of the year we, we should be closer to 20 in the Netherlands oh, which wow. is wonderful of course We're really happy. when people ask you about save uh, why why should you come to a save video what do you tell them well I think there are several reasons why it's really important to bear witness um, Let's first talk from a selfish perspective. For, for us as vegan activists, it's so important to keep that connection with why we're doing is to make the connection with the, victim, with the victims. Because they're going to their deaths and if we're not there to see them and try and comfort them and try and mean something to them, then who else is going to do it? So in many cases, like for example with pigs, we can actually comfort the animals. If, if we get enough time to spend with them, we can, we can touch them and talk to them and give them some water. We can really mean something to those animals. Um, but even in the case of chickens or ducks or anim other animals that you can't really touch or give them water, we can play a very, very important role in um, removing their anonymity. Because these animals, people see them as just an anonymous group of things that go to be slaughtered and they meet but when we give them a face when we film them and photograph them and really show their faces and, and focus on their eyes and we show that to the rest of the world then it helps people make the connection between what they eat and that that food came from an individual that's the body of an individual that that's very important element of it i think is to mm. give the animals a face mm. And we are here in Luxembourg at the International Animal Rights Conference and we meet many people from all over the world really yeah. And the same movement is uh, international network. Uh, yes. What does that mean to you to be part of a, a global network? Well, it's it's wonderful to um, you know first of all to meet people who are doing the same kind of thing from all over the world, and also to exchange ideas and hear how it works. Because sometimes we have to be creative. We don't always have cooperation from slaughterhouses or from the police or from municipalities. So it's wonderful for me to exchange ideas with other safe movement uh, organizers and to and to hear how they're doing it in their countries and with their groups and and we can help each other a lot in, in exchanging ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. It's been great meeting you and your Thank colleagues you. here. Likewise. Yeah.